Would you please rise to sing our first Christ song this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. 
hunky-dory. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. I've got a few announcements. Uh, we're having UAMYF, our United Methodist Youth Fellowship, tonight from 7 to 8.30 here over at the Education Building. And uh, we'll be outside quite a bit, as much as we can stand it. Uh, but I've also got some uh, orange sherbet to serve up. So that'll cool us all nice. So um, come, come 7, 8, 30 tonight. Uh, next Sunday, uh, we're going to be, our city schools are going to be starting uh, August 19th on Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday. So on Sunday evening, from 6 to 7.30, I'm going to be blessing backpacks right out in front of the sanctuary here from 6 to 7.30, a week from today. And uh, I hope uh, the sun is low enough that it gives me some shade out there from the trees across the street. <laughs> I hope by 6 o'clock that's happening. So uh, come come next Sunday and get your black back. Get your back. Packs blessed. That's hard to say. Um, Joyce. Joyce, you're on. Charlene's doing great. She was oh, tested yeah. this week uh, negative, mm -hmm. and she's tested one more time negative. She's out of quarantine. Really? Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that. Thank you for any prayers for Mason. Yes, we have his IV pick, and now I've been taking three times a week for his treatment. So. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Mason's saying, I called a friend of mine this morning. We sang a hymn together with him this evening. That gave me a lot of joy. Good. And also, Tom was heading in the right direction, and they called him and said, no, we don't have a lead car. He and I trade. He's still heading in the right direction. Um, so. Good. Good. We've got a new baby in our church. That is Kayla Elizabeth Beersdorfer. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. She's not a little girl. 20 and a half inches long. Born on Wednesday the 5th this past week. So, uh, also, I had another joy. I was mowing my yard Thursday evening, and two of my neighbors came down and helped me. Annabelle and Reed Miller. Uh, they, they drove by with their family and said, look at that old man having trouble on his car. And they came down and helped me. That was so nice of them to do that, and I'm thankful. Other joys? My niece graduated from A&M on Friday. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's continue singing.
song has motions to it. So yes. next time we do it, don't you think they ought to be doing motions for us? And keep taking us motion? Yeah. I, I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> well, it's time for our youngsters. And two more just came in the door. Come on in, guys. Come on in, guys. Y'all going to stay right where you are sitting, and I'm going to talk to you from where I am. Dane, what did you do to your knee? I dislocated it. Oh, I'm okay. refusing to believe that I'm 47. Well, <laughs> don't do that anymore. I'm 35. Uh -huh. Goodness gracious. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I saw a meme about that. Yeah, I think it was more about guys my age, though. It says, you know, I, the major source of our injuries is us thinking we're younger than <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, all right, kids, that's kind of what I want to talk to y'all about today. And I hope you you may have been paying attention the last few months. We all know things have not been normal. <laughs> Do you realize that, Charlie? Things have not been normal for what, five months now? March, April, May, June, July, into August. Yeah, five months now. Five, five full months. Okay, y'all paying attention over there? You too, Charlie. Yeah, uh -huh. So, I hope you've been watching Mom and Dad because they're showing you something. They've been showing you something now for five months. That a big part of growing up and, and becoming mature is that we sometimes have to learn how to do things we don't want to do. Charlie, like keeping our hands off the stuff we don't need to be touching all the time. <laughs> Charlie and I have had that talk before, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but all the adults here can testify to this, I hope. I know you can. Learning things you don't want to know how to do. That's, and, and so some of that's going to happen in school this coming year. It's okay. Everything's okay. So we have things to go on. Are y'all with me now? <laughs> One of the things you may want to, not to do is listen to the preacher. <laughs> but you have to learn how to do that. Right? All of you agree. Yes, shake your head. Obviously, all of us say yes. Yes, we all need to learn how to learn, listen to the preacher. That's one of the things we have to learn how to do. I, I'm kind of kidding about that. I do want you to listen to me, though. <laughs> But I, 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 there's a number of things that I've had to learn over the years. Some of them I've already forgotten, and I'm glad I've forgotten them. I, I, don't, I, did, I hadn't forgotten that I learned how to do them, and that I knew how to do them. I forgot how to do them. You know, uh, you, you think of one of those simple things like the, uh, the slide rule calculator I had when I was in high school. Ooh, that was cutting edge stuff back then. <laughs> Dick, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, T.I. Mine was T.I. something. I, it was a fancy one. I, I can remember my professor in college, he, he was walking around and he grabbed mine up off my desk and he said, you see that? He said, uh, when I was in the Air Force, we had a computer that filled a room this size and it couldn't do what this can do. Now, you would hold up the phone, yeah. a tiny one, get the smallest one you can get, and you'd say the same thing. You know? Uh, so we learn stuff as we get older, and I hope y'all are looking forward to going back to school and learning some more stuff this year. Tyler, are you ready to go back? Yes, yeah. yeah. I hope you are. I hope you are. What about you Ellis boys? No, no. I'm ready for him to go back. Yeah. <laughs> Dad's going to make sure you go back. Yeah. Okay. Well, God bless you all. 
I hope you have a great year. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord God, help us to learn what you want us to learn. And help us to do the things you want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. sermon series this morning. And, uh, 
Did I come up with a name for this sermon series? Oh, I got right here. A late summer sermon series. Very creative of me. Oh, no, it's called Christian Living. That's it. Christian Living. Christian Living. From, and I'm going to be covering Romans chapter 12. 13 and 14. Not all of them, but most of them. Most of them. chapters 12, 13, and 14. Paul, Paul writes to the church at Rome about Christian living. So um, it's amazing how relevant this still is yeah. 2,000 years later. So I'm going to start with Romans 12, verses 9 and 10. Paul writes, Be sincere in your love. For others. Hate everything that is evil and hold tight to everything that is good. Love each other as brothers and sisters and honor others more than you do yourself. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We bow with you for a word of prayer. May the words of my mouth meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I don't remember where I saw this years ago. It is stuck to me somehow. I'm talking about 40 years ago I saw this. Uh, two con men talking together and, and one says to the other, sincerity is the key. When you can learn how to fake that, you've got it made. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. When you learn how to fake sincerity, boy, you can go a long way in life. Look, and there, there's people who think like that. That's not what Paul's talking about, though, is it? He is talking about sincere Love. Be sincere in your love for others. So what does what does Paul mean by sincere love? Who would we model that after? Who's our example? Jesus Christ. Yes. In all things, our example. Jesus Christ. What did his sincere love call for him to do? He died for us. He gave the ultimate price for us. His, his love was a real love. Remember, we've talked before about agape, the, the Greek word used here, which is a self-giving, self-sacrificing love for others. So what do we mean by self-giving? Self-giving. What well, part of self-giving is, is some of the things I was talking to the kids about, about learning things we don't want to learn. And why do we learn a lot of those things? For the sake of others. Um, when you're married and your spouse has health problems, do you just ignore that? <coughs> no, you, you learn about Whatever disease it is they have, right? As a matter of fact, you get to the point where you can talk rather intelligently about it with the doctors, right? Do you know what prescriptions they take? Yeah. And why? Because you sincerely love your spouse. Right? So it, it's not about what I want. It's about what they need. I, I was thinking about that. I, I'm going uh, on Tuesday to uh, work at the freshman orientation week at AM. They have a they have a special week for, for the new people in the core cadets. And since I was in the Corps of Cadets, I go and I, and I help them with that. And I, I meet parents, a lot of them parents who are 
who, who don't know anything about the core cadets or Texas A&M. And so my job usually is to kind of calm their nerves. Now remember, some, a lot of times these are parents, it's their first child moving out of the house to go to college. They're nervous. They're nervous. I enjoy doing that. I enjoy doing that. That's not what I'm worried about right now. What I'm, what I'm, what I was thinking about this morning was because see, I've done that before. What I was thinking about this morning, though, James, my oldest, you know, lives in College Station, and I'm going to call him this afternoon and say, "Hey, can we go to lunch together when I'm there in College Station on Tuesday?" So, where do we go to lunch together? That, of course, that's what I'm worried about. That's my major concern. Where do we go to lunch together? Well, how, how do you do this? Okay. James, um, James has a girlfriend. I, I don't know if she's a new girlfriend or not. I think he just didn't tell me about her for a long time. I think they've been going together for a while. Cause so, so I think what I'm going to tell James is uh, let's go someplace that you like that Kendall doesn't like. Because I know right now, if he's the guy I think he is, when they go out, out to eat, he doesn't make her go to some place she doesn't like. Right? So I'm going to give him the opportunity to go someplace that he doesn't get to normally go. Pretty smart, huh? Dad's got a few things going on upstairs. So self-giving self love, sincere love, self-giving Self-sacrificing. Now, what does self-sacrificing mean? I'm willing to give how much? How much did Jesus give? So self-sacrificing love means I'm willing to give all. And there's people you can make right now that you would, you'd say, it, if it would save their life, I'd step in front of a truck right now. I'd rather it be me than them. That's what we're talking about. That, that if they're drowning in, in the Brazos River, I'm, I'm doing what? I'm jumping in. Even though I know, you know, I, I may be thinking there's chances are both of us are gone at this point. But that doesn't matter in the moment. I've got to do what I've got to do. And I've got to try. Self-sacrifice. Now, we can all think of people that we feel that way about, right? I hope. The hard thing is, who is Paul talking about? He says, let your love for others be sincere. What others? All the others, right? That's who Paul's talking about here. All the others. Be sincere in your love for the few people you pick. Is that what he wrote? No, he said, be sincere in your love for others. Others, inclusive, others. And who does it include? Everybody. Everybody. That's not easy, is it? How can we get there? from where we are. Well, first thing we need to do is ask for help. Right? Because we need help with this one. This is not something we can do on our own. We can't just go out into the world that we live in and love everybody like that. We're not capable. So we ask the Lord to help. 
And when we ask the Lord to help, we also give the Lord permission to change us. Let me, let me back up a little bit here in chapter 12 for just a moment. Verses 1 and 2. Friend, uh, Paul writes, Dear friends, God is good, so I beg you to offer your bodies to him as a living sacrifice, pure and pleasing. Now, when he says offer our bodies as a, as a sacrifice, do you think he's just talking about our physical bodies? He is talking about our physical bodies, but not just our physical bodies. He's talking about our spiritual selves as well. So the two, two combined are, are what? Again, all that we are. All that we are. Offer all that we are to God as a living sacrifice. That's the most sensible way to serve God. Don't, this is verse 2, don't be like the people of this world, but let God change the way you think. Then you will know how to do everything that is good and pleasing to God. Paul, Paul has a way of going straight to the crux of the problem. Let God change the way you think. What's the problem in my life? It's the way I think. All my problems come from the way I think. Because then the way I think affects what I do and how I relate to other people. And there we go. I mess it all up by what I think. So, how do we let God change the way we think? What, what is the process there? Well, we, we talked about the first step already, prayer. Prayer and permission. We're not only asking God to change the way we're thinking, we give God permission to change the way we're thinking. And God is doing that. You've gotten hints of it already if, if, you, if you examine your life closely. God has already been trying to change the way you think. Sometimes we don't listen, though. Imagine that. Where did we learn how to not listen? <laughs> it comes naturally to us, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, God is giving us hints about what we, what we can do. So how, how can we change? Let me give you an example. I talked to you a little while ago about my time in the Corps of Cadets. Uh, my senior year there at a and I, I started going back to church. I had always gone to church when I came back home to Katy, but I had not been going to church while I was there in College Station. So I started going to church again in College Station. And pretty soon I was convicted that, that one of the things that uh, needed to change about my behavior was uh, something that was normal in a all-male dormitory of college students. Do y'all remember the guys I'm talking about? Yeah. 22 to 18 years old. Yeah. But imagine all guys. What was one of the things we liked to do in, in the dorm? We would tell jokes. What kind of jokes were they? Were they nice jokes? No, they were filthy jokes. They were filthy jokes, and a lot of them were really funny. Vulgar, but funny. And I decided 
I didn't need that in my life anymore. But you know what? I could not tell the other 300 guys in my dormitory to stop telling those jokes. That's, that's not my place of, with who they, who they were and who I was. I, I could not tell them what to do, right? Have you ever tried to tell somebody else what to do? How'd that work for you? Usually doesn't work out very well, does it? So I knew I wasn't going there. So what did I do? Okay, this is what I did. This is this is this is where the Lord led me. I couldn't change them. I couldn't stop them from telling those jokes in my presence. But what could I do? Set an example. Yes, I, I first of all I stopped telling them myself. And secondly, Ron. When they would tell them in my presence, I would look like that. You tell me the funniest joke I've ever heard, and I look at you like this. I had enough discipline. So you did teach us discipline in the court, you know, so I had enough discipline to do that. I didn't frown at them, but I didn't smile either. I didn't give any indication that I enjoyed that at all. And guess what happened? The ones who were paying attention stopped telling me those jokes. That's the kind of thing where God is working on us. See, it, it doesn't, you don't have to feel it, but just act it. We can act it into being. Do you love everybody out there? Answer honestly right now. Do you love everybody out there? No. No. Do you want to? Okay. See, first step, right? We want God to act on our water. That's what we're praying about. Lord, help me to want this. Second step is for them, for us to act like we love everybody out there, whether we actually do or not. And as we continue to act like we love everybody, what will happen? We will begin to love everybody. Do you believe that? Do you think that would actually work? Now you you gotta you gotta do it all. What what does Jesus tell us about enemies? What are we supposed to do for our enemies? Pray for our enemies. When you come across somebody you really don't like. Write their name down. Not, not in a bad way. I remember, remember some of those old movies. I'm writing your name down you know, on my enemies list. No, no, no. I'm, I'm writing your name down in my prayer concerns. And I'm, I, I'm praying God to change them. Maybe, maybe. But what's the main concern here? My attitude toward them. Okay. Even if you don't believe this will work, I want you to try. <laughs> Even though you won't be sincere about it right now, I want you to try this. Go out in the world this week and act like you love everybody. Are you going to be perfect at it? No. But you will start. You will begin. And that's the key. The longest journey in the world starts with the first step. So pray and act. Let's bow to the word of prayer right now. 
Lord God, we need to get started. This world is desperately in need of your love. And it is in us. We are your people. We are called to take your love into the world. So help us, Lord. Help us to begin today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Time. We've got our time of reflection and giving right now. So I would like us to spend a little bit of time uh, thinking about the people who have loved us. The people who have made a difference in our lives because they loved us. How God brought those people into our lives and made a difference through their love. There's been so many, I, I, would, I would be afraid to start naming people because I would leave too many wonderful people out because my memory is not the greatest thing in the world. But I've been blessed by God. Wonderful, loving people. A, a good number of them had no good reason to love me. They weren't my mom. They weren't my dad. They weren't related to me at all. They were just practicing what Jesus had taught them. God is good. We bow with me for a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for all that you have given to us. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would take what we offer and multiply it. Make it more than it is so that our world will be blessed and changed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. some of those young people are going to be facing. They're going to be leaving their hometown sometimes for the first time in their life. But, but let me tell you what happened. New friends. Yeah, and that's exactly right. That's exactly right because when I went up there I took one of my best friends with me 
took a couple of my best friends with me. But I also made some friends that I still am in touch with today and are real close to while I was there. So here, here's the little, here's the little uh, poem I learned about that. Make new friends, but keep the old. Those are silver, these are gold. That's a good one. Other prayer concerns. Yes, ma'am. Kelly Harrell, we've been praying for Kelly. Yes. So thank you. <coughs> Are there others? Uh, my dad's pretty much well. Your dad? Yes, he had a job interview this week, so we're praying he gets his job. Oh, good. He's been out for a while. So. Oh. Uh, <coughs> don't hold your cat. Let's go to our Lord in prayer and meditation. Lord God, we are so thankful for the privilege of coming to you in prayer. And also, Lord, taking the time to listen to what you say to us. Give us ears to hear. Give us the willingness to accept what you say to try the things that you lead us to, to be open to change and to learning and to growing. Help us to open ourselves to the love with which you have filled this world. Lord God, we lift up to you these we have named this morning both those we have named out loud and those we have named in our hearts. We lift ourselves as well to you, Lord, for we need your help. We need your constant care and guidance. We need to get better. We need to be better. Help us, O oh Lord. We ask in Jesus' name, and we join together in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We do have the opportunity to change our world. And that change starts right in here. Right in here. Right here. Right now. It's a big task, but we've got a big God. And without God, we couldn't do it. We couldn't even start it. But with God, we can complete our work. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. We're going to sing our way out here, go forth with praise, with the gift of God. It's number 408 in the hymnal. It's up on the screen. Let's stand and sing together. <coughs>
benediction. This week I'm calling it Go Be and Do. Go into the world, be the people of God, and do the work of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.